Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you all. I'm going to give a brief overview of kidneys and kidney cancer 101. I have no disclosures. And so I'm going to talk about the anatomy and function of the kidneys, and then I'll go over how kidney cancer develops and how we diagnose it. And then we'll talk a little bit about the different types and stages. And then I'll talk about a very brief overview of management. And if, if I have time, I'll go into a little bit about the surgical techniques. So I think it's helpful to understand the kidneys by going through some physiology and anatomy. And so you have, most people have two kidneys. So you can see in the image here, the right kidney and the left kidney. Some people have one and you can function usually just fine with one kidney. The main job of the kidneys is to filter the blood. And so by doing so, they remove the waste and excess fluid and they put that into the urine. And in doing this, they're able to really maintain a proper balance of fluid for the body, proper balance of electrolytes and proper acid base balance. Um, so this is extremely important for the body. The kidneys also have some other functions like controlling the blood pressure and helping to create red blood cells. And I think it really helps understand how the kidneys work by understanding a little bit about the anatomy. And so what I've highlighted here in red, you can see the large blood vessel that's called the aorta. And that's the blood vessel that comes off of your heart and gives off all the smaller blood vessels to your body. You can see that each kidney has one artery going to it, the main artery. Um, some patients may have two or three, um, but typically it's one. And this brings in the unfiltered blood into the kidney. Um, on the next slide here, I've highlighted the parenchyma in pink. So this is like the meat of the kidney. And this is also where most kidney cancer develops. And within the parenchyma, this is where the, um, the blood is filtered. And so you can see these small little red blood vessels. These are the small arteries bringing the unfiltered blood in. The kidney filters it and um, turns the waste into urine, which is collected in the yellow tubules that you can see there. The urine then drains into the renal pelvis, to the ureter, and then to the bladder. And then the filtered blood returns to the body through the renal vein and then the large blood vessel highlighted there, which is the vena cava. And I think this is also helpful to know because the kidney cancer tends to grow into the veins and can even grow up into the vena cava. And so how does kidney cancer develop? So like most cancers, it develops when cells start to replicate out of control. And so typically normal healthy cells are replicating and dividing in a very controlled manner. And so we have tumor suppressor genes. These are genes that prevent cells from replicating and those can get mutated. If they're mutated, they can get turned off and cells can replicate out of control. We also have oncogenes. These are genes that tell the cells to replicate and these are typically turned off in healthy cells. But if they get mutated, they can turn on and cells can proliferate. We also have DNA repair genes and these are genes that help your cells repair any DNA mistakes that they make because every time they replicate, they have to replicate the entire um, DNA. And so if these genes are mutated, then DNA mistakes get proliferated on and these mutations can lead to um, aggressive features. So this can happen in an inherited or acquired manner. So one example is the VHL gene or von Hippel-Lindau gene. And this is a tumor suppressor gene. And so you may have heard of VHL disease. This happens when a VHL mutation is spread down through families. And so those patients have a higher risk of tumors. But we also know that the majority of kidney cancer has VHL mutations. And most of those people don't have the actual VHL uh, disease. And so they've actually acquired those mutations. And so how do those mut mutations occur? Well, there's a lot of risk factors and in kidney cancer, as well as most tumors, um, smoking or vaping is one of the biggest risk factors. There's also some chemicals that you may be exposed to in the environment or through work that can lead to um, toxins. And those toxins build up in the blood. As we said, the kidney filters those toxins out. So those toxins sit in the tubule as you can see in the image that we talked about there. 
And so you can imagine that toxins sitting there in the tubule could lead to some mutations in those nearby cells. And the majority of kidney cancer actually occurs in the, or originates from those tubules. Um, there's also some other risk factors specific to kidney cancer. So excess body weight or obesity, high blood pressure, older age, and then of course, any genetic or inherited um, mutations. And then also a lot of the patients that we see don't have any of these risk factors actually. And so a lot of it is unfortunately just chance. And so how is kidney cancer diagnosed or how is it found? The kind of triad that we always learn about in medical school is this triad of flank pain, blood in the urine, which occurs if the tumor is growing into that collecting system, and then having like a flank mass or fullness. And so as you can imagine, those things really only occur when the tumor gets very, very large. And so we don't actually see that all that commonly anymore the majority of tumors are found incidentally. And so a patient may get a CT scan because they're having some back pain or maybe they were in a car accident and the radiologist incidentally notes that there's a tumor on the kidney. And so that's the majority of how um, kidney cancers are found now. Once your doctor has found that you have a mass on your kidney, the next step is to make sure that you have the proper imaging. And so um, we always need a CT or an MRI scan usually, and we really need that to have contrast. And I'll tell you why um, in a couple slides. And then in addition, sometimes your doctor may order other scans like of your chest to make sure that there's no disease that is spread anywhere or other things like the brain or the bones, depending on if, if there's risk for that. Um, We'll also get labs. We especially are interested in what your baseline kidney function is. And then sometimes we order a biopsy. This isn't a typical thing. Kidney cancer is one of the unique tumors that we don't always biopsy. And one of the reasons is that our imaging is so good that we usually can really tell um, what uh, your tumor looks like and what we need to do just based on the imaging. But occasionally there's reasons that we would get a biopsy if it's going to change what we might do. And those are very safe and accurate. So I just put this slide in because I think it's helpful. Um, oftentimes your doctor visit when you first find that this mass can be very scary. This for a lot of people is the first time that they're having to hear and think about the word cancer. And so a lot of times when you come for your visit, you're getting a lot of information. It can be really difficult to retain that information because it is such an emotional situation. And so I do recommend if you have a loved one that you can bring with you, that can be very, very helpful. And sometimes that person could take notes so that when you get home and you can't remember what all was said and what stage and those kind of things, you can refer to the notes. Um, I also recommend that before your visit and after, write down any questions as you think of them. Oftentimes you think that you'll remember and then you get to the visit and there's just too much going on that you forget the important things that you wanted to ask. And then most importantly, anything that you don't understand, ask your doctor because we want you to understand fully what's going on um, and there is no dumb question. You're not supposed to know anything about this before you come. And so everything that we tell you, everything that we're trying to help you understand, we want you to ask. So now I'll go into a little bit about the kind of types of kidney cancer. So if on your imaging, we can see a solid tumor, then there's a pretty good chance that that is going to be cancerous. But your, your kidneys can also develop what's called cysts. And these are like fluid filled structures. And oftentimes these are not cancer. And so we use what's called the Bosniak grading system for these cysts. And so you can see like Bosniak one, cysts that are simple and just fluid containing, these are never cancer. And so we don't do anything about them. If the cysts have small septations or lines in them, those usually are not cancer either. And so we don't do anything about them. But if those lines get thicker or they start to get very irregular and develop actual nodules, those have a much higher likelihood of being cancer and we typically treat them like they are. 
And importantly, we can't see these things without contrast. And so that's why it's really important that we're able to get um, a CT or an MRI scan with contrast. As far as the different types of kidney cancer, once your tumor is out or we have a biopsy, then the pathologist looks at it under the microscope and can tell us what kind it is. And this can um, be helpful in determining what further treatment you may need. So the majority of kidney cancer is clear cell renal cell carcinoma. And this is just because these cells have a lot of clear cytoplasm. The next most common is papillary and then chromophobe. And there's many other subtypes that are a little bit more rare that I just haven't included on this slide. All of these types of cancer can develop changes that's called um, sarcomatoid features. And so that's just where the cells have become a little bit more aggressive looking. And so you may see that on your pathology report. That just means these tumors are more aggressive, um, but luckily we have some treatments that tend to work very well for these tumors like immunotherapy. And so when we talk about staging, there's really kind of two types of staging that we talk about. So there's the TNM staging, tumor node metastasis. And this is what your physicians are really going to be using to try to convey the level of your um, disease. And so we have tumor T1 is localized to the kidney in less than seven centimeters. T2 is localized in greater than seven centimeters. T3 means that the tumor is starting to invade the blood vessels or the fat around the kidney. And T4 means that it's invaded beyond the fascia or the layer that um, surrounds the kidney called Gerota's fascia. The N stage just means if you have regional lymph nodes that are involved, then we would call that N1. And metastasis, if there's anywhere that the, the tumor has spread to, we call that M1. Now, the other kind of cancer staging is what you may hear if somebody that you know maybe says, what stage are you? And so there's stage one, which essentially an easy way to think of it is small localized tumors. Stage two is larger localized tumors. Stage three is when the tumor is starting to invade blood vessels or fat or there's lymph nodes involved. And then stage four is really when it started to spread or invade other structures. And so how we treat kidney cancer is largely dependent on whether it's localized or advanced and metastatic. So it's, if it's localized, meaning confined to the kidney, we have a lot of different ways to treat it. One thing we do often is just surveillance. So if a tumor is two to three or less centimeters, oftentimes we know that these tumors aren't the type that will grow or do anything bad, and we just watch them. Um, and this allows us to avoid the side effects of therapy. Um, there's surgery, which I'll talk about later, um, or ablation where we can freeze or burn the mass and radiation. And then once tumors become more advanced or metastatic, um, sometimes we still remove the kidney and that can be called cytoreductive nephrectomy um, or consolidative if you've had other therapy. And then there's systemic therapy, meaning it goes to the entire body. And a lot of people think of this as chemotherapy. Chemotherapy actually is not um, very effective in kidney cancer, but we have other therapies, targeted therapies like tyrosine kinase inhibitors and immunotherapy. And then oftentimes we will use radiation, ablation, or surgery to treat the metastatic lesions. And so I'll go just briefly into a little bit about the surgeries. So um, we have partial nephrectomy or radical nephrectomies. And partial nephrectomies are really good for some of those smaller masses or exophytic masses. And what exophytic means is that the tumor is kind of bulging out of the kidney rather than growing into it. And so what we do, um, as I mentioned earlier, your kidney filters all of the blood to your body. And so that's a lot of blood. And you can imagine if we cut into the kidney, it's going to bleed. So we have to clamp the artery that's coming into the kidney, and then we cut out the mass and sew the kidney back together. And then we unclamp the artery. We do this whenever we can because this saves the remaining kidney function, which is going to be really important um, for you in the future. 
But you can imagine if this tumor is larger or growing into the kidney, that can be very difficult. So for example, the one you see here, um, in order to cut that tumor out, you would be cutting off the entire blood supply to the kidney and there, the rest of the kidney could not function. So in cases like that, we do a radical nephrectomy, which means we just remove the entire kidney. And this can be done uh, robotically or laparoscopic. Um, where you have several small incisions. Um, this can be a little bit easier on the body and a, a quicker recovery. And this is really good for a lot of these smaller or less complex tumors. Um, a lot of centers also can do it for some of the larger and more complex tumors as well. And then there's open surgery, which just means you have a little bit of a larger incision, but it can provide the surgeon really good access for some of these large complex masses. Uh, oftentimes is a little bit um, higher of recovery time. And so I put this slide on here. This is just about the prognosis of kidney cancer. And so this slide here shows the five-year survival rates for kidney cancer. And you can see that overall, they're very good. Um, localized masses, almost everyone is still alive and doing well at five years. Um, even regional masses as well. Um, once the tumor has metastasized, this is more aggressive and, and these patients can um, not do as well. But I do want to highlight here that this data, in order to have five-year survival rates, this data has to be five to ten years old. And so it is. And we have a lot um, of improved treatments since then. And so I think these numbers are actually even higher than what you see here. And I'll also highlight that this depends on a lot of other factors. So survival obviously is going to depend on other um, medical issues and age and things like that. And then I also just want to highlight that we are all in this together. And I think all of your physicians, everyone on this call, all of the patients, of course, we all want to get these numbers closer to 100%. And we're all working very hard to do that. And so with that, I'll just leave you with this um, image of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have.